Hello, it's Drackle, and we're going to be talking about door locks and one-way doors today. Now I have a new texture pack, it's called Pure BD Craft. I'll link in the uh, video description. But it's, uh, it's very nice, and it's very easy to tell what all the blocks are. Um, sometimes with the uh, other texture packs, um, the blocks don't look anything like they do in the default, so I didn't really want to use those and confuse people. But this one looks nice, and it's easy to tell where everything is. Um, let me know if you guys like this or not. Um, I could always change back to default. Now, I have a couple other things in store for you this week. I just completed two really awesome redstone projects. Um, I'm going to release those over the weekend, so stay tuned. They're going to be really, really sweet. I'm, I'm very proud of them. And also, if you guys are getting bored of redstone, I just created a new sort of mob thing. Um, that's a squid farm with no squid in it right now. <laughs> I have to back out of the exclusion zone to get the squid, but I'll probably release that, I think, maybe early next week. I'll make a tutorial on how to build that. So, anyway, let's get started. First off, I want to show you a uh, one-way gate. Oops. Look at this axe. That axe looks awesome. Anyway, um, this is just a uh, two-high doorway with soul sand in front of it. Now, if I try to pass through, I can't. I cannot walk through this door. If I remove this block, I can walk through just fine. Even if I have the block there, if I come from the other side, I pass through just fine. But I cannot pass through on this end. So it's essentially a one-way gate. Why is that useful? Well, say you have a minecart that you want to have travel through your base or through an area, but you don't want mobs getting in through the minecart gate. Oh. Minecarts pass over it just fine, and you can walk out from this side just fine, but mobs and players cannot pass through on this side. Um, I pass through because you can kind of glitch it out by going sideways. That's why I have three blocks of soul sand. Now I can't get in. Pretty cool. Um, what else? But why would you want to lock your door in the first place? Well. On multiplayer servers, you don't want people getting into your house. You don't want them getting into your storage. And yeah, they can just knock the blocks out around the door or whatever. But, I mean, we can't make our houses out of bedrock, so this is the next best thing. Um, secondly, people that like to create custom maps, you know, adventure maps, very useful uh, for controlling where the player is. Now, we're going to get started here uh, with the doors themselves. Now this is a uh, door connected to an RS NOR latch, and um, let me preface this by saying if you're kind of weak with redstone, you might want to look at my redstone tutorial number one and two. I'll link those. Um, that'll teach you everything you need to know um, about what I'm about to do with this these circuits. Now an RS NOR latch, as we know, is a, a memory cell. It's a one-bit memory cell. Um, in this case, it's going to remember whether um, basically which side of the door I passed in on. So when I press this button, you can see this side of the RS NOR latch is lit, it's powered. If I press the button again, nothing happens because I've already set this state. I've already set this side on. And it's going to keep that door open uh, permanently until I walk through and hit this pressure plate. And the pressure plate activates this side of the RS NOR latch and sets this state on. And if I step on it again, nothing's going to happen, just like the button. And notice I cannot open the door from this side at all. And that's because, well, for one, the pressure plate is one further away from the door. Um, if I put it right there, it wouldn't matter if I had the latch or not. It would still open the door because it's right next to it. Um, but yeah, that's how this works. And as long as this side is set, that door will not open. Very simple to do. Um, if you want to do um, another type of RS NOR latch, you can use this one. This is a much more compact uh, version. Very, very easy to do. Now the resets are here and here. And you can also change the side the reset is on. That makes it very um, useful and very, what's the word I'm looking for? Very comfortable, I guess. <laughs> Not comfortable to use, but uh, 
Very easy to use, I guess, is what I'm looking for there. Just like this. A little bit smaller, a little bit more convenient. Convenient was the word I'm looking for, goddamn. Okay, so that's how you do that using a RS NOR latch as a memory cell. That's one way to lock a door, and this is very useful for adventure maps when you want like the hero to go through the door and then he won't be able to get back out. He can only continue in one direction. All right, some more door locks. Now, what we have in front of us is called an SC lock, Sierra Charlie lock. Um, this thing will work just fine, and the way it works is, um, let's see, I have the buttons hooked up to the door here, and that opens the door, and I have it on the other side as well. But if I flip this lever, and now I try to do it, nothing happens. And that's how an SC lock works. Um, it's basically a, a modified AND gate with an AND gate on top of it. And this whole thing will not work unless this torch is turned on. I'm not going to go into detail about this because this is kind of bulky and impractical. There are much easier ways to lock a door than using an SC lock. If you want a tutorial on this, just uh, search it on YouTube. But I really don't see many uses for this. I prefer not to use it. And the reason I prefer not to use it is because of this. Now, here we have buttons on both sides of the door. I press the button, the door opens. Okay. Door opens. But when I flip this lever, yeah, nothing happens. The door's locked. And how do we accomplish that? Let's take a look. And notice all the circuitry is completely hidden. Very, very nice. Okay. Now this circuitry is very simple, especially compared to the SC lock. Um, this uh, torch just powers the door, nothing special. I, I needed an inverter because this torch has to go uh, on. But uh, pretty much all this is is an AND gate. This is the AND gate here. You have one torch here, one torch here, and the torch in the middle. Now when I have uh, this lever on, it turns this torch off. And now when I press the button, you can see both torches are off, which opens the door. It turns this torch on and powers the door. Okay, but when this lever is set in the off position, this torch is on. And no matter what I do now, the AND gate will not complete. It will not output a, uh, a powered signal. And that's really all this is. Very, very easy to do. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll turn the rain off. And then I'll show you an example. A very quick example of how to build this. Torch here. Here. Redstone in the middle. This is in my Redstone tutorial version 2, or part 2, if you missed that. And I have a lever. Where are my levers? Um, do I not have any? Here they are. Okay. So I have this here on one of them. And I can put a button on this side. And I'll have, uh, I don't have a door, so let's use a piston. Okay. Now, when that lever is not turned on over there, if I press the button, nothing's going to happen. But when the lever is on, you'll notice this torch is turned off. And now, when I press the button, both of these torches are off, which lets this torch turn on and activate the door or the piston or what have you. And that's really it. That's all you need for a door lock. Um, this extra circuitry right here um, from this part on is just a couple of inverters to make the circuitry a little bit more compact and uh, and nice looking and lets me hide it a little bit better. Turn the time to day and the buttons are connected um, they're on this block right above here and they go into this wire and run into the AND gate. And the repeater just powers an inverter into another inverter which sends power up to the door. Pretty easy to do, actually, um, and very easy to hide. 
Now a couple of notes um, with this latch system here when we had this one-way door. You have to use buttons and pressure plates. You can't use levers or else both sides of the latch are going to be on and you're just going to, it's not going to work. It's going to be all sorts of fuck basically. So please be cognizant of that. Cognizant. That's a great word. Cognizant of this. And uh, also, um, I figured out this might be a little bit confusing. So I hooked up a demonstration. And basically what we have here is the AND gate. And notice the output of the AND gate is off. And it will be off until I press the button. And it turns on. Now we take that and we put an inverter here. It just inverts the signal once. And then we invert the signal again. And the reason I did that was because I needed to move power directly upwards. Now you could do that with a spiral staircase. But uh, it's very difficult to hide that with a, uh, when you're trying to hide it underground. So this is the easiest way to do it. This torch, which would usually be on, is sending power directly up to the door. But I needed to invert that. Because um, I didn't want the door to be powered until I hit the button. That's it. That's, that's all I did down there. <clears throat> Just a little bit more compact version of this. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, this. Um, notice most of the time doors are left hinged. In other words, they have their hinges on the left hand side. And they open like that and they open when you power them. That torch is on, the door is open. But notice this door has hinges on the right hand side. And notice also that the door is powered right now. There is power going into the block and the door is closed. But when I unpower it, the door opens. Weird, right? Well, that's a feature of right hand, uh, right hinge doors. If you ever tried to wire double doors, you'll have noticed this effect. And basically the only difference between right hinge doors and left hinge doors is when a left hinge door is powered, it opens. And when it's unpowered, it's closed, but it's the opposite for the right hinge doors. And that's weird. When you place redstone there, it updates it <clears throat> and uh, it keeps the door open when it's unpowered. And when it's powered, it's closed. Now this lets us lock the door with another mechanism basically. When I unpower the door, it opens. But if I turn this lever on, which is also connected to the door, now I can't open the door because it's going to be powered from this input. So turning it off does nothing basically. Uh, one advantage to this door lock is some people will say, aha, well I just have a button. I can put a button here and open the door. No, you can't, <laughs> because the door is powered and nothing you're going to do, no current you can introduce to the door is going to open it. So you have to knock your way through with a pickaxe. And you, if you ever try to wire double doors, like I said, you'll have noticed this effect, because double doors need opposite power states. This needs to be off, this needs to be on, or vice versa, for the doors to open. Just like that. All right, just a few quick notes before I go. I totally forgot how do you uh, how do you make a right hinge door? You put a block to the right, place the door to the left. That's it. Right hinge door. Place a block to the left, or if you just place the door down anywhere, it's a left hinge door. That's it. Um, also with this latch system, again I keep forgetting uh, stuff about this. Um, I'm going to show you how to build the latch first of all. If you if you're too lazy to go watch the tutorial, but I, I have to explain something anyway, so just a loop like this. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, rain in the desert. Rain in the goddamn desert. Okay. Alright, and that's it. Now you connect, uh, in this case, the button side like that, and then the pressure plate side like that. <clears throat> you have the pressure plate here and the button there, or however you want to do it, basically. And one more note with this, you might be wondering, um, there's nothing that's actually, it, well, it, it doesn't look like the door is actually connected to any of the, of the circuitry, but that's actually not true. In this case, what's happening is when I turn the button on, it's powering the latch, but the latch, this side is on, it's also feeding back into the door. 
So what's happening is the button is connected to the door itself. The button opens the door. The button sends power to the latch, and the latch sends power back through this block and keeps the door open, basically. So it forms like an infinite loop. And that loop is cut when I hit this pressure plate because it uh, switches the side of the latch and unpowers this whole side, which makes the door close. And the pressure plate is not in any way or shape or form connected to the door. It's just connected to this side of the latch. So, yep, that's it. So all I wanted to cover, because that was kind of confusing, even to me, the first time I did it, I'm like, what the hell is powering this door? And I realized. Anywho, uh, so it looks like 1.8. The patch is going to be delayed um, from what I've been reading on Twitter until probably next week. It sucks. Uh, oh, well. We have no control over that, I guess. And uh, but stay tuned. I hope Friday and Saturday I'll I'll put out those uh, really cool vids. Uh, I don't want to give anything away, but one has to do with the clock, and one has to do with a lot of lava and arrows being shot at you. So uh, stay tuned for that shit. It's gonna be good. Until next time, this is Dracul signing off.